Good morning, good afternoon, good night, good part of day, whatever it is for you. Welcome to This Date in History, also known as TDH. This show is all about the events that occurred to date in years past, both recognized by actual historians, but mainly things we personally find intriguing enough for us to bring to you. The sources of this information come from the Smart Device application, Today in History, What Happened Today in History, Historical Calendar, and the website on thisday.com. For links to those sources, the music done by Carrera, and anything else potentially interesting, check the underbar of the description below. Anyway, I am A.O. Zanner, and today is Thursday, also known as Thursday, November 17th, 2022. So let's hop into the history right off the shoot, shall we? Starting us off in the year 473, the future Zeno I was named Associate Emperor by Emperor Leo I. Alright. And we got another historic event here doing one pretty good time jump here, 1491, over a thousand years. Uh, Anne of Brittany became engaged to King Charles VIII of France. Okay. 1558, Elizabeth I, Elizabeth I, at the age of 25, ascended the English throne upon the death of her half-sister, Queen Bloody Mary. Ah, yes, Bloody Mary. Just killed everybody. Also a good drink. 1603, English explorer, writer, and courtier Walter Raleigh went on trial for treason. E. I wonder what he did. Like, let's take a look here. Um, he was, uh, he published an exaggerated account of his experiences in a book that contributed to the legend of El Dorado. Okay, so this guy is that piece of crap who led all of that. Um, he was distrusted by, he was, uh, distrusted by Elizabeth's successor, King James I, who eventually had him tried for treason and beheaded. Oof. So, uh, yeah. He lost his head one way, then he lost his head literally. So, anyway, moving on up to 1796. Battle of uh, Arcole ended in Venice. French forces under Brigadier General Napoleon Bonaparte defeated an Austrian force led by Joseph Alivinci after a three-day battle. Hmm. We got a music premiere here with uh, Senor Topham Hatt. 1839, Giuseppe Verdi's opera, Alberte Conte di, premiered in Milan. Alright. And in 1855, David Livingston became the first European to see Victoria Falls in what is now Zambia and Zimbabwe. Victoria Falls. Let's see what that looks like here real quick. Uh, the images. Oh, that's a beautiful falls. This looks dangerous. Oh, that, man, that looks, that's really cool. Look at that. Dude, I want to go check that out. That's That looks awesome. Anyway, we got another historic event here in 1862. Union General Ambrose Burnside marched north out of Washington, D.C. to begin the Fredericksburg Campaign. Yeah, so that way to go up and scoop and push all the Confederates back down because they really got deep into our territory. 1863, Abraham Lincoln began his first draft of his Gettysburg Address. Dang. I didn't know people knew, like, when he actually started writing it, but, you know, I guess if that's documented, why not? That's pretty cool. I would like to have some of the things I've worked on documented if they ever become a big thing. You know, oh, this is when he started working on that. Oh, cool. 1876, Piotr Ilyich uh, Tshaskovsky's patriotic Slavonic march made its premiere in Moscow to a warm reception. All right. Oh, we got this guy again, uh, the manly man. 1884, police officers or cops arrested boxer John L. Sullivan in his second round for being cruel. Wow. Huh. I didn't realize that boxers can get arrested during a game, but that's interesting. 1894, serial killer H. Ace Holmes was arrested in Boston after being tracked there from Philadelphia by the Pinkertons. Ah, uh, good old Pinkertons, man. And 1917, Vladimir Lenin defended temporary removal of freedom of the press. Uh, hmm, 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 yeah. Uh, everybody can uh, everybody can figure out you know how bad that is today you know so. 1922, 100 years ago on this date, the last Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, Mehmed the Sixth, was expelled to Malta on a British warship. All right. 1929, Nikolai. Uh, Bukharin was expelled from the Soviet Politburo amidst a power struggle with Joseph Stalin. Mm. 1931, Charles Lindbergh inaugurated Pan Am service from Cuba to South America in the Sikorsky flying boat American Clipper. Huh. Alright. 1939, Jerome Kern and Oscar Hammerstein uh, II's musical Very Warm for May, featuring June Alliston, Eve Arden, and Vera Ellen, sounds like he was in California, 
and directed by Vincent uh, Minnelli, opened at the Alvan Theater in New York City, running for 59 performances, inspiring nine-year-old audience member Stephen Sondheim's love for musical theater. Okay, that's cool. And we got some sports history here. 1956, Syracuse fullback Jim Brown scores NCAA record of 43 points versus Colgate. Yep. And see, speaking of toothpaste, if 9 out of 10 dentists recommend that toothpaste, keep in mind, you having bad teeth is what keeps them in business. Why would they recommend a toothpaste that would give them out of business? Don't buy recommended. 1959, San Francisco Giants future Baseball Hall of Fame slugger Willie McCovey won National League Rookie of the Year. Cool. Look at him all cozy in his jacket there. We got some more music here. 1962, Neil Simon, Cy Goldman, and Carolyn Lay's musical Little Me opened at Lute Fontaine Theater in New York City, running for 257 performances. All right. 1962, as well, U.S. President John F. Kennedy dedicated Dulles International Airport outside Washington, D.C., which would later become JFK International. That's interesting. We got some more music here. 1967, Davy Jones of the Monkees opened a boutique Zilch One in Greenwich Village, New York. All right. Oh, looks rather dapper. Kind of fades into the background there, but I suppose that's intentional. We got an invention here in 1970. Douglas Engelbert received the patent for the first computer mouse. Oh, well, thank you. And, you know, I'm, I use one of those, too. Without those, you know, the world would be a vastly different place. So thank you, Mr. Engelbert. And moving on up to the last remaining queen in England, 1970. Elton John performed a live studio concert broadcast for WABC in New York City, later released as his 11 1770 album. Okay. Yeah, that would, uh, yeah, that's the date. We got another historic event here in 1973. U.S. President Richard Nixon told AP, People have got to know whether or not their president is a crook. Well, I am not a crook. <laughs> yeah, you are, you piece of shit. Anyway, 1977, Egyptian President Anwar Sadat formally accepted invitation to visit Israel. All right. 1979, Salem's Lot, American two-part, uh, or a U.S. two-part miniseries based on the horror novel of the same name by Stephen King, premiered in the U.S. All right. Yeah, Stephen King, he's the guy who, uh, who wrote an entire book while in the air after getting hit by a car and family guy, if I'm correct. 1979 as well, Ayatollah Khomeini freed most black and female U.S. hostages. Well, most, but not all. Well, at least there's that. 1980, John Lennon released Double Fantasy album in UK. Alright. 1983, the film Yenti was produced, directed and starring Barbara Streisand and Mandy uh, Patinkin, premiered, based on a play and story by Isaac Bashevdi's singer. Okay. Got some more sports history here. 1985, the 35th NASCAR Sprint Cup, Daryl Waltrip wins. Or won. Okay. That's an interesting photo. Why is he looking down? He kind of looks like uh, a little bit like uh, the bad guy from uh, the first Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. Anyway, we've got an album release here in 1987. The Madonna compilation album, You Can Dance, was released. You can notes if you want to. You can leave all your oats behind. But if your friends don't know it, if they can't oat, then oh, they'll know it's of mine. Uh, thank you, Zanny, for that, uh, for that oats-themed inspired cover of um, The Safety Dance. 1991, the 41st NASCAR Sprint Cup, Dale Earnhardt won. All right, of course. Third time I've seen him win. 1991 as well, and in an all-U.S. final, Pete Sampras won his first of five ATP Tour World Championship tennis titles with a 3-6, 7-6, 6-3, 6-4 victory over Jim Courier in Frankfurt, Germany. Ah. All right, then. Ooh, we got a coup d'etat here. Why does it look like he's crying? Uh, 1993, General Sani Abshana led a military coup against Ernest Shonen Khan's uh, transitional administration and returned the Nigerian government to military control. Ay ay ay. Uh, looks like he became yeah he became president. You know he successful in his coup. Then we got some more music here in 1994. Andrew Lloyd Webber, Don Black, and Christopher Hampton's musical Sunset Boulevard opened at Minskoff Theater in New York City running for 977 performances with winning to uh, seven Tony Awards. Nice. Damn, you almost made it to 1,000, man. Just another 23 would have, you know, got you at that uh, four-digit mark right there. 
1997, Mario Lemonix entered the National Hockey League Hall of Fame. All right. 1998, Mariah Carey released album number ones. Okay. 1998 as well, Whitney Houston released My Love Is Your Love. And 2000, Alberto uh, Fujimori was removed from office as president of Peru. Hmm. 2002, uh, Australian uh, Leighton Hewitt scored back-to-back season-ending tennis Masters Cup titles with a classic 7-5, 7-5, 2-6, 2-6, 6-4 victory over Spaniard Juan Carlos Ferreira in Shanghai, China, Mike. All right. Crikey. That's a, that's a pretty good uh, pretty good game right there, Mike. And moving on up into 2003, Britney Spears, at the age of 21, became the youngest singer to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I think I remember that. Like, she's not that much older than me. Um, like, only a couple years. How old is she, anyway? She is 40, so I'm, I'm five years. So, yeah. We got a film premiere here in 2008, Twilight, based on the book by Stephanie Meyer, directed by Katherine Hardwick, starring Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson, pr- Pattinson premiered in Los Angeles. All right. Got some more sports history here. 2013, German Red Bull driver Sebastian Vettel won record eighth consecutive Formula One race uh, with a victory in the United States Grand Prix at the Circuit of the Americas. It looks like they took a photo right after he took his helmet off. He has all that helmet hair going on. Sweaty. Oh, this guy. Here we go. 2015, actor Charlie Sheen confirmed that he is HIV positive. Dang. That's not surprising at all, though, you know, knowing what he's done. Charlie and his angels, so to speak. 2019, 21-year-old Greek tennis star Stefanos Tsitsipas defeated Dominic Thiem of Austria, 6-7, 6-8, 6-2, 7-6, 7-4. I guess uh, scores are contested in London to become the youngest winner of the ATP Finals in 18 years. Dang. So almost as long as he's been alive. So that's pretty impressive. Like It's almost like I'm born for this. 2019 as well, Iran's Ayatollah Ali Khamenei labeled protesters thugs after unrest over higher gasoline prices brought Tehran to a standstill a day before. Or Tehran. So, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, let's see here. Before we move on into Burst and Death's audience, were there any articles that you wish uh, I had uh, expanded more on most? I know I'm just plowing through this. We're only 14 minutes in and already going into Burst. But this is what happens when I'm left to my own devices. I don't have anybody to ping pong off of, so it's uh, it's a solo show today. Uh, but yeah, anything that you wish I had, um, you know, elaborated more on, anything you uh, would have liked to add it, you know, if you were part of the show, uh, start a comment section in the comments. You know, start a comment, whatever, in the comment section. It's a dialogue, whatever. I don't know. My brain is fried. Anyway, let's move on into bursts here. We have Vespasian, who was born on this date in uh, the year nine. Uh, he was a Roman emperor from the year 69 through 79, born in Falashrina, Italy, dying in the year 79. Then we have King Louis the 18th, yes, uh, King Louis the 18th, 1754, the first post-revolutionary king of France from 1814 through 24, born in Versailles, France, dying in 1824. King Louis, yeah, isn't he the one who was uh, with, um, oh shoot, oops, okay, there we go, um, uh, isn't he the one who was with uh, uh, what's her face the eat, eat cake Marie Antoinette um, I guess not I guess she was with some other King Louis there's too many King Louis anyway we also have Bernard Montgomery that's that's wild uh, Bernard Montgomery, born on the state in 1887, he was the first Viscount Alamein, British World War II Field Marshal, African Campaign, and D-Day. Let's not forget the massive failure at uh, uh, Operation Market Garden. Kind of funny that they don't uh, put that in there. This guy was an idiot. He was also a World War One officer. World War One officer. He was born in London, and then he died in 1976. But no, Montgomery was a a crap leader. You know he. Uh, all he did was lead uh, lead his troops to defeat after defeat after defeat, and when Patton showed up, he put him in his place. At least he should have. Then we have Rock Hudson, 1925, a U.S. actor, Pillow Talk, A Farewell to Arms, and Ice Station Zebra, born in Winnetka, Illinois, died in 1985. 
We have Gordon Lightfoot, still alive today. He's 84. Happy birthday. Born on this date in 1938. Canadian folk singer, Sundown, the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, born in Aurelia, Ontario, Canada. Huh. Looks like a serious man. We have Martin Scorsese, 1942, a U.S. film director, Raging Bull, Taxi Driver, The Last Waltz, Goodfellas, The Departed, to name a few. Born in Queens, New York. Happy birthday to you. Danny DeVito! Hey! Here we go. Uh, 1944, U.S. Emmy Award winning actor, Taxi, he was Louis. Ruthless People, Twins, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, he was Frank. Um, he's been in so many... Um, like, what, what cool thing do I remember him being in? I don't remember personally. Um, oh, like, uh, he was the penguin in Batman, you know? So, there's that. Uh, he was born in Neptune Township, New Jersey. All right. We got Lauren Michaels. Something's in my eye, so give me a second. Sorry about that. Uh, 1944, Canadian TV producer, actor, and comedy writer, Saturday Night Live, born in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. We have Tom Seaver, 1944, a U.S. Baseball Hall of Fame pitcher, National League Cy Young Award, 1969, 73-75, 12-time MLB All-Star for the New York Mets, Cincinnati Reds, and Chicago White Sox, born in Fresno, California, died two years ago in 2020. We have Elvin Hayes, 1945, a U.S. Basketball Hall of Fame forward, NBA All-Star, 1969 through 1980, 11-year uh, stint right there, NBA scoring champion of 1969. Born Rayville, Louisiana. Who else was born on this day? Cyril Ramfosa, 1952. A South African anti-apartheid activist, businessman, and president of South Africa from 2018 till present. Born in Soweto, South Africa. Happy birthday, Mr. President. And I'm not going to say that the Marilyn Monroe way because I'm not a woman. So... Here we have Raw. Oh, I almost said Raw Pud or Paul Rudd. We have RuPaul, 1960, a U.S. drag queen, actor, singer, and TV personality. RuPaul's Drag Race, born in San Diego, California. Eh, not good. Uh, 1961, Indian business female uh, woman, CEO of ICICI Bank, uh, born in Jodhpur, India. Who else do we have that was born on this day? Rachel McAdams, 1978, a Canadian actress. Mean Girls, Midnight in Paris, in Spotlight, born in London, Ontario. We have Tom Ellis here in 1978, was a Welsh actor, or is a Welsh actor. Miranda and Lucifer, born in Cardiff, Wales. Somebody told me I should go watch Lucifer. I wonder if this is the same thing. If this is the... That was a... I heard a noise. I'm hearing things. There's nobody in here. I heard something. I heard a slide. Eh, maybe it's just a ghost. Um, yeah, I wonder if this is the, uh, the series somebody, uh, told me I need to go check out. Anyway, let's move on to the deaths here. Starting us off in 375, we have Valentinian I, the great Roman co-emperor and ruler of Western Roman Empire from 336 through 75, died at the age of 54, and that's what's making the noise. We have Gregory of Tours, died on the state in 594 AD, was a Gallo-Roman chronicler and bishop, history of the Franks, died at 55. We have Calico Jack, that name's familiar, an English pirate captain who operated in the Bahamas and Cuba, executed for piracy by hanging in Port Royal at the age of 37 in, in the year 1720. He was born in 1682. Then we have Thomas Pelham Holes, first Duke of Newcastle, British Prime Minister for the Whig Party, uh, 1757 through 62, uh, died at the age of 75. All right. Who else do we have? We have Auguste Rodin, uh, 1917, was a French sculptor, baser, and thinker. So the guy doing this, you know, on the thing. Uh, died at the age of 77. And look at that beard, dude. Like, dang. And we have, who else uh, died on this day? We have Robert Hofstadter, 1990, a U.S. atomic physicist and Nobel laureate, electron scattering and atomic nuclei. Died at the age of 75. That is, uh, that is really important, what he discovered. We have Adrian Quist, 1991, an Australian tennis player, analyst, Australian championship, 1936, 1940, 1948, does at the age of 78, not to 91, Mike. I don't know why every time I see Australia, my, my language just changes, and I know my accent's piss poor, bro. But anyway, that shall conclude the show. Once again, you can check the underbar in the description for any links you may be interested in, including my not limited to all things Omni Coalition. For your dose of past events daily, we stream every day at 10 in the morning Pacific time, which is 
uh, 11 Mountain, 12 Central, and 1 Eastern, respectively. Uh, until you catch us tomorrow, uh, I was A.O. Xander. And, um, yeah, as I said, until you catch us tomorrow, or if you're interested in the news, we do a news show at 2. We bumped it up from 3 to 2. So 10 and 2, just for you. That's, uh, that's what we're doing now. Anyway, until you see us next time, uh, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection. Rate five thumbs and subscribe. Until then, toodles!